I recently had a viewer email me asking about uh, some tips they were having a hard time getting the pattern transfer tool to work. Uh, it sounded like basically the toner, the pattern wasn't coming off onto the wood uh, as well as they would like. And so looking for some tips, uh, troubleshooting on, on why that might be. So I figured I'd run through, share that list uh, here with everyone else to see if anyone else is having issues and uh, try to solve those for you. And there's several issues. I'll run through them kind of in the order that you would uh, address them or, or come upon them. And the first one is sanding. Um, it's often, you know, we like to make wood nice and, and smooth and um, feel nice, uh, which is fine to do uh, at the end of the project, depending on the finish you're doing. But when you're putting pattern on, especially with the pattern transfer tool, uh, you don't want to make it too smooth. I would say 120 to 220 grit would be fine. Uh, this example here is actually a little bit rough. Um, I'm not sure what that, I, I received this project as it is with the pattern on it and um, in this condition, so I'm not sure how it was sanded, but it's a little bit rougher than I normally would. I don't know if you can see the kind of shadows from the, the grain on there, but like I said, 120 to 220 is perfectly fine uh, for applying the pattern before carving. Anything smoother than that and any um, finer grit, uh, the wood will feel nice and smooth, but the problem is the sawdust gets really fine. It'll actually clog up the pores, the grain of the wood, and you end up burnishing it. And so you're making just this uh, perfectly uh, smooth, glassy surface that the toner, there, there's no grain exposed, there's no texture for it to grab onto. Um, and so it's just gonna stay on the paper uh, rather than adhering to the wood. So that's the first thing, making sure you don't actually uh, carve it or uh, sand it too smoothly. The second thing is to make sure the tool is hot enough. Uh, it can feel very hot and we're ready to go, but it might not actually be fully warmed up. So I like to make sure that it's been plugged in and warming up for at least five minutes before I go so I know that it's up to full temperature. So my process is usually I will plug in the pattern transfer tool uh, first thing and then I'll go print my pattern, get it all set up, apply, uh, tape it onto the project, and by then it's been probably five minutes and I can start going with the tool. Um, and if it's a larger project, you know, something like this is probably fine, uh, maybe a little bit smaller, but by the time you get this size or, or much larger, uh, you're probably going to actually have to take breaks. Uh, the, the wood is a thermal insulator and it will absorb uh, a lot of the heat energy from the tool and so it'll cool off as you're using it. And so if you're getting a nice smooth pattern uh, coming off at the beginning and then it kind of tapers off and it stops coming as smoothly, then take a break, let the tool heat back up to full temperature and then come back again. Um, and so then in that process while that's heating up and you're printing, uh, the other tip is in the darkness to print at. Um, I would say I, if I'm making a pattern that's using pure black lines, I will then print it at 70 to 80 percent opacity because that gives me a good balance between being dark enough that it'll come off and be very clear on the wood for me to carve and see what I'm doing, but also makes it easier to remove any rem remaining pattern lines after I'm done. If you print it at 100% opacity, full darkness, black uh, on the wood, then that can actually deposit more than you need and erasing and removing those lines after you're done uh, can be a headache, and especially if you have any fragile areas, you, you don't want to be erasing any more any harder than you have to. So I try to balance that 70 to 80 percent opacity on a black printout uh, works well for me. So once you've got the pattern ready to go, you've got the tool hot, um, you know this isn't obviously real but pretending this is my pattern I've got it down taped on the wood. One thing uh, to uh, the kind of the, the two techniques as far as actually doing it is make sure you're applying pressure. Don't just like lightly drag it. Uh, that's not really going to get the toner to, to release from the paper. So you need to put a little bit of pressure. Obviously we're not trying to like go through the wood. We're not trying to dent it or, or anything, but just some good even pressure uh, to, to help kind of squeeze and, and press it off of the paper. And the other thing, this is one of the big things that I see people struggle with. They'll do the pattern, go through the whole thing like this, and then once they're done, then they'll peel it off, and there's almost nothing on the wood. Maybe some, you know, faint 
indications of the pattern. But what you really need to do is as you're going, I like to uh, bend up an extra corner to, to give me a hand uh, to, or handle to grab onto. But as you're going, pull the paper up literally right behind the pattern transfer tool. Uh, so even if I go here and you know, then I start pulling up sometimes uh, again, it's it's cooled off and it's stuck back on the paper too much. But if you do this and really chase the tool with the paper as it goes, that gets it to adhere to the wood a lot better, and I get really good results doing that. Um, I think that probably about covers it. So making sure the tool's hot, making sure your uh, pattern is a good darkness on the wood to be able to see, but also erase. Don't sand it too smooth. Uh, make sure you're applying a little bit of uh, firm pressure on the pattern and peel the w paper with the pattern back immediately as you're moving the tool to make sure that it sticks onto the wood while it's hot and doesn't uh, go back onto the paper. So hopefully that troubleshoots any issues that you might have been having with the pattern transfer tool. Um, and let me know if you have any other questions.